Alright guys, this one caught me off guard. So I was just recording The Witness and I just randomly looked at the, at the Steam sale happening right now and saw Shadowrun was on sale. Figured, oh yeah, let's just check to see if I'm missing any of the games in the series. Uh, and then I see an update saying that literally today there was a free expansion to Shadowrun, Shadowrun Hong Kong, the one that I've played on the channel already. So I guess that's what my evening is now. This com was completely unplanned, but hey guys. It's Keith, like always, and after a, a completed series of uh, Shadowrun Hong Kong, they've went and added an additional campaign, which apparently, according to a pop-up that showed up here, you access by doing new game. There it is. Shadows of Hong Kong. Bonus. They really had to go in a crazy direction with that one, huh? <laughs> Same two characters on the cover. They went from Shadowrun Hong Kong to Shadows of Hong Kong. Blowing everyone's mind with a naming uh, scheme. Set in the weeks following the events of the main campaign, Shadows of Hong Kong will give you, and your team, the opportunity to turn the tables on the corporate police force that once hunted you. Through layers of corporate greed and urban strife, you will contend with dangerous enemies, uncover a deadly conspiracy, and cement your reputation as a prime runner. Assuming you survive, of course. So basically, it's an epilogue slash follow-up. So by the way, guys, if you have, if you're, if you're one of my existing subscribers and you weren't here when I played the original series, right now, go to the playlist link in the description and start watching Shadowrun from the beginning, because this takes place after the main game, which means major spoilers for the game itself if you don't know what the story is already. But yeah, so this is our epilogue. After, so, spoilers from this point out. Uh, we left off last time going and uh, basically sacrificing our father figure, our adopted father, to take out this giant, horrible monster that he had essentially created back in the day by completely destroying the ch the, the feng shui of this terrible ghetto that his uh, that their corporation designed. And it was this big, horrible teeth monster, and we took it out, ultimately. But, rather disgustingly in the epilogue that we saw there, the freaking uh, company that ca caused this in the first place was getting away with it. Just totally... Like, totally clean. And that's pretty unacceptable. And it looks like we're gonna have our chance to deal with that. Ooh, there we go. It actually recaps our previous ch stats here. You defeated Kinya, although Raymond sacrificed himself to banish her permanently. You accompanied Isabel to Deccon 2056. You've spoken with Ractor at length and earned his trust. You did not help Gopit when she returned to the sinking ship, and she destroyed it on her own. You prevented Gaichu's death at the hands of the Wampoan Elders, and invited him to join your team. You invited Ractor to join your team of Shadowrunners. You chose to aid Gaichu in his fight against his old team, but did not let him turn Ishida into a ghoul. There's one thing I regret in there, which is definitely the part where we never did Gobbit's quest, but in my defense, they didn't- <laughs> the dialogue awkwardly didn't reveal uh, Gobbit's quest until late, too late in the game for me, just because I didn't splurge quite enough. And then they're like, no, nah, it's time for the final quest. No, they're, they're like, it's time for the final mission, so we can't do this now. And like, no, let's do that. Like, no, no, we're not doing that. Rude awakening. Something is wrong. The last thing that you remember, it was the night of the Kowloon City Riots. You and your team were running an errand for Kindly Cheng, recovering an object before the inevitable police response turned the city upside down. Everything was going well. You had the item in hand, and then... Nothing. The world went black. A sudden explosion of pain behind your eyes jolts you back into the present. A nightmarish succession of dream images flicker through your consciousness like a strobe light. A man with a pockmarked face. Slim fingers playing over the surface of your brain, leaving a slug's trail of agony in their wake. A second figure whose face you couldn't see digging with relish through the scraps of memory that your tormentor left behind. It was a rough night, and now, as your eyes snap open and adjust to the light, you find yourself in a reality that is a little more comforting. A single bulb hangs from a corrugated steel roof. The dim light that it casts is barely enough to illuminate the table in front of you. Your head throbs with the heartbeat, and each pulse gives rise to a low, grinding, stomach-churning discomfort. There we go, found the menu option to make it, uh, fill up more of the screen for you guys. There we go. Heavy weights on your wrists tell you that you've been handcuffed. Try to clear your head. You squeeze your eyes shut and count to ten. The pain in your head slowly dissipates, and your vision gradually swims back into focus. There's a rag on your lap, an old dishcloth, 
matted with, cor with congealed blood. The dull ache that radiates from the bridge of your nose up into your sinuses tells you where it came from. Try to remember how you got here. Slowly, delicately, you begin to search your memories, picking at the soft spots in your consciousness like day-old scabs. You get another burst of tooth-grinding agony for your troubles. Eventually the pain begins to subside, and dim memories seep to the fore. You remember the distant reek of tear gas. You were on a job, an errand for Kindly Cheng. She wanted you to retrieve something, a stone of some kind. You remember gunfire in the streets, the sound of distant screams, the dizzying blur of asphalt running towards your face as you fell, and then nothing. A blank. Concentrate. You screw your eyes shut and try to force the memories into the surface. A searing jolt of pain is your reward. With the, with the pain comes a dream image branded into your memory with crystal clarity. The first of your tormentors, the man with the pockmarked face. For a few torturous seconds, the image swims through your head, wriggling like an eel. Then as suddenly as it came, the pain dissipates, fading away until it's swallowed by the relentless ache of throbs between your temples. In the distance, you can hear the pop hiss of a pneumatic door unlatching and sliding open. An enormous figure steps into the room, and the door slides shut behind him. You can barely make out the silhouette of the troll standing ac across the table from you. Your other senses work to fill in the blanks. He's got a heavy build. The floor creaks every time he shifts his weight. The rustle of fabric over hard, sharp keratin tells you that he has prominent dermal deposits. He's also wearing way too much cologne. From the chest up, the darkness swallows him. You can't see his face. Say nothing. The room remains silent as he busies himself, arranging objects on the table in front of him. A notepad, a mug of, a mug of soy cuff, an old ball, a ballpoint pen, an audio recorder. Finally, he looks up from the objects and focuses on you. Good morning, Dr. Finch. Mr. Finch? Dr. Finch? Yeah, n no. My character's the opposite of a doctor. He's an idiot, kind of. The words roll in his throat like rocks in a tumbler. How are you feeling today? Did you sleep well? Not at the bloody dish rag. Aside from the fact that I spent the night bleeding like a, into a dirty towel, I'm great. Oh, poor baby. And I thought you shadow runners were supposed to be tough. If it's any consolation, the nosebleed was expected. It's a common side effect of the magical interrogation. I'm thinking when I'm finished here... I'll tie you to the chair and experiment on your brain. Sounds fair to me. You're upset. I get that. But threatening me isn't going to help you. He lifts the mug out of the light and towards his lips. You hear a long, loud slurp as he sucks the streaming fluid down. For a sec- for, a rec for the record, the mage who worked on you did his best to be gentle. He's good at what he does. He uses a light touch. You call this a light touch? Believe me, the nosebleed could have been a whole lot worse. You didn't- we didn't have to put you on fluids, did we? He sets the mug down on the table, murky liquid sloshes over the rim. He was even kind enough to give you a cloth to bleed into. Yeah, I'm sure he's a real prince, but your other mage sure as hell isn't. His brow furrows. What other mage? I don't know what you're talking about. Your pal with the skin condition didn't mess, my, didn't mess up my nose. It was the second one. The second mage. I couldn't see his a face. He shrugs. Must be a figment of your imagination. It happens sometimes. The brain invents details to try to make sense of what's happening to it. Give it a few days and the confusion should fade away. You'll see. Bullshit. You're lying to me. We don't even have two mages on sight, handyman. There's no way that you got scanned twice. He shrugs his broad shoulders. But hey... Believe what you want. Don't let it distract you, though. We've got work to do. 
Now, let's get to it, shall we? He shuffles his papers, flips open the notebook on the, of the, on the table with the tape of his pen. Run me through what happened last night. What was the point of the mind probe if you're going to interrogate me anyway? Magic is great for pulling facts from a person's memory. It isn't so good at contextualizing them. What we got from you was a jumble of disorganized information. It'd take a lot of guesswork on our part to piece those facts together into a coherent narrative. You cooperate with us, tell us the story as you remember it, and you can spare us some of that work. That'll be good for you in the long term. If you lie to me though, well... Just don't. I'll know it. Now, if you please, tell me what happened last night. Just start at the beginning, and take me through it until the moment that we picked you up. Hang on, I'm not saying anything until you tell me who you represent. Sorry. You get nothing until we're sure about you. Of course, the best way to ensure that happens to be... Ha happens it... Uh, the best way to ensure that happens is to cooperate with me. Tell me what I want to hear, and I'll pass the word along to the people in charge. I'll help you if you give me the name of the mage with the pockmarked face. Fair is fair, right? There's a long pause. The guy's name is Wallace Koo. But like I said, I've never met him in person. They only bring him on site when there's astral work that needs doing. If you were thinking of getting payback, you shouldn't get your hopes up. Now, let's begin, shall we? He turns the auto recorder on with an audible click. Now, we already know that your team went to, c to combat Pangs, the biker bar. That's your boss, Kindly Chang. Oh, that your boss, Kindly Chang, sent to you out there to conduct a shakedown of some kind. The owner of the bar had something that didn't belong to him. Auntie Chang sent us to get it back. Right. The artifact. He glances at the notebook on the, on the table. Says here, it was a Jade, Jade Kong from the Lingzhu period. Dated back 3000 BC or thereabouts. It was just a rock to us. An ancient rock maybe, but a rock all the same. That's pretty much all it is to anyone outside of the Collector's Circuit. Our mage ruled out any latent magic in the stone. It's basically a Ming vase, valuable as hell to the right person, but worthless to anyone else. We've got it locked up for safekeeping, by the way. It's in good hands with us. Now you said us earlier. That was you and... His voice trails off. Oh, I see what's happening here. We're doing the, uh, we're doing the Dragon Age 2 thing with, uh, with Varric being interrogated and telling the story, and we're probably going to do a flashback to exactly what was going on. So whoever I click on here is going to be my party member in this situation. Oh man, who is my go-to? Duncan's good, Ractor's pretty good, no, Gaichu's great. Isabel, Gobbit. There's good options around here. Yeah, Gobbit. She's heard that uh, Combat Pangs had really good bar food. Gobbit, the orc girl with the rodent fixation. He jots down a note on his pad. Okay. And who else? Alright, who do I want to stack over there? A, a good combatant would be decent. Although Isabel could hack, which we can't do without Gobbit. So do I want to go with either Isabel or Gaichu, probably. No, probably Ractor, because Gaichu doesn't have range. Did we lose somebody? Oh no, Duncan. Yeah. Duncan's who I was thinking of as the ranged character. Although Shotgun's pretty great from, uh, Ractor. These two I mix up a little bit sometimes. Duncan came along. The ex-cop. Nothing I hate more than a good guy gone bad. Another scribbled note. Alright. Got it. Who was last member of your team? Isabel. The dwarf. Right. Quiet little thing. The pencil dances over the pad a final time, then stops. Your interrogator glances up at you. Alright. So Chang sent the group of you to combat Pangs to recover a very old rock. And she sent you on the eve of your bloodiest riots in Kowloon City's history. Funny timing, don't you think? Yeah, maybe. Kai Cheng has a flair for the dramatic. But for the most part, the riots worked out in our favor. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. 
We are absolutely doing the Varric. The distant sounds of urban chaos rang in your ears as you lead your team through the series of constrictive black alleys. It was hot out, sweltering, and the humidity left your body drenched. A bad night for a riot, but it made for good cover. You'd, uh, you'd been making good time since you left Heioi, and combat pangs was only a few blocks away. We're getting close. Her nostrils flared as she sniffed in the air. Smell that? Garlic, onion, sizzling oil. I'm thinking chicken wings. Hey. I'm sorry, that's not even, that's not even close to the right word. How are you getting any of that over the smoke and tear gas is beyond me. You're right about one thing, though. We're getting close. And that means that we need to keep our guard up. Right. Game face is on, everyone. Duncan gave you a nod of acknowledgement, then turned to face the others. Be ready to defend yourselves. I've heard stories about the Go Gangs at Pang Runs, the 888s, the Black Sun Boys, the Grinders. Packs of animals and leather jackets, all of them. And they like to let their knives do the talking. Chicken Wings, Gun Show, focus. The guy that Pang was working the grill is... The guy that Pang has working the grill is supposed to be like some kind of kitchen wizard. He caramelizes the wings in fish sauce. That's what the guy at the bus stop told me. I mean, how amazing is that? I can go for some chicken. See, Seattle gets it. I'm not worried about Eddie Pang or the punks that hang out in his bar. We've got a job to do and we're gonna do it. Yeah, I'm with you there. She flips a uh, rope of her hair about over her shoulder with a careless toss of her head. Come on, folks. Let's keep moving. The alleyway stretched out ahead of you, its claustrophobic confines seeming to converge together in the distance. Your team began to move. All right. We're back in Shadowrun. This feels kind of cool. Although I, I'm thinking now about the fact that I probably made a bunch of hasty decisions about my build near the end of my playthrough, thinking I'd, uh, thinking that I was like one boss fight away from never playing as this character again. So that's a little scary. I guess if you're new around here, here's a glimpse at what my points are in. I'm a I'm a chi like monk punchy character. <laughs> And I probably made a few costly mistakes in my build right at the end, specifically because I thought that the game was about to end forever. I did not I did not know that this was going to happen. But in general, very effective character, very hard to kill, and very good at punching things. So that's a decent combo. Hey you, friends. Come on man, hurry up. Two figures in dirty riding leathers stood facing the shop window. The patches sewn into the backs of their jackets called them out as members of the Black Sun Boys, a small-time outfit, one of a dozen in the neighborhood who all operated under the supervision of Eddie Combat Ping. The window was unbroken, but not from the lack of trying. You could see a uh, half a dozen indentations in the transplast, and me as many spent shell casings on the ground. The troll was working on an access panel, trying to brute force his way through the shop's security system. His human companion rocked on his heels, practically salivating over whatever was locked inside. Must be the last unsquashed window, uh, unsmashed window on this block. Quite a prize for a looter with ambition. Duncan smirked at the two, shook his head. If the owner of that shop invested in, transpl in transplast windows, the building's probably alarmed. Might even have automated defenses. A pop turret or two, say. Let's see. If these two trip a building alarm, that could bring a security team right to the spot, riots or no riots. Bingo. He examined them, frowning. These idiots look like they've been here for a while. They might be able to tell us about the police presence up ahead, if you can get them to talk to us. Otherwise, I suggest leaving them be. Your call, one way or another. Let's approach. The human ganger t uh, turned on his heels, spinning to face you. An exaggerated, frantic motion. He was probably riding a, a cram high. He gnarled at you. He snarled at you through a mouthful of crooked teeth. Hey, strangers, this is our alley. Black Sun Boys turf, not a place for tourists. You scoot your narrow asses back out off this block and out of our sight, or I'll make you sorry you were ever born. Uh, shut up and do what I tell you, or you're, I'm gonna fold you in half. How about that? The human went as white as a sheet, the blood draining from his cheeks, looking like he re recognized the name. I, uh, we're not afraid of you. I mean, why do you even care if we rob the store? What are you even doing here? 
You're not very bright, are you? I told you to shut your mouth. His eyes went wide and he raised his hands in, in surrender. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. We don't want any trouble with you. Just, uh, just tell me how to make this right, okay? Tell me what to do. Tell me about the cops. You see any patrols in the area? Are you sticking... Are, are they sticking to their barricades? Oh, they're out there. Real tricky happy, trigger happy, too. They're doing a whole lot of shooting and ain't asking many questions. You'll find a whole pack of them just around the corner, led by one of those special duties assholes. He nods his head eagerly. eagerly. There. Now? We good? If me and, ne and Needle Nose keep doing our thing, will you leave us in peace? We don't want tr uh, trouble with no Shadowrunner. You and your friend pack up and leave, and we'll forget that you were even here. His face went hard, his fearful expression wiped away by a wave of pure contempt. We didn't have the guts to challenge you. He turned to the troll at the panel and snarled out a few words, words and the two stalked off down the hallway. Alleyway. Oh, that's averted. Because my character is scary as fuck. I still, I still have fun with the idea of playing a big brutish character in this playthrough just because I'm, I, I'm usually a clever character or a mystical character or like a, a, a thief or like a paladin or something. Basically everything except for the stupid brute and I've, I've been having fun with the idea of this character just being like, no, fuck you. <laughs> is, is, that's my answer. So there's any, they said that there's enemies right around the, the uh, corner up here. Probably should just go ahead and make a save. Our first new save of the new expansion. That's just a nightmare of old saves that are completely unorganized. But if I ever need to revert to one... Alright, they said there'd be enemies around the corner. The important thing is they didn't keep doing what they were doing, so they didn't set off the alarm. The bodies had been reduced to a bloody ruin. Their mouths were frozen open in expressions of silent terror. Your team gathered to examine the remains. These people were shot in the back. I don't see any weapons on them either. Somebody gunned them down while they were trying to run away. Bad night to go wandering. Speaking of which... Right, let's go to Pang's. We don't want to stay out here any longer than we have to. Alright, let's get let's make some distance then. That's a dead end over there. Is that a thing I can click on? I don't think so. We have to go down this way. Which also looks like a dead end. Oh. Stay where you are. We very abruptly entered combat. Alright, that's not good. Whoa, they just keep coming, don't they? Alright. The HKPF patrol stared you down, their weapons held at ready. In the center of the pack, a man in heavy tactical armor loomed over the, the others. The plates of his armor were embla uh, emblazoned with the regalia of Hong Kong's elite special duties unit. One of the cops cupped his hands to his mouth and barked out a command. You! Hey you! Stop moving put your hands in the air! Tough words, but he sounded nervous. I think they're shaking from all the crazy stuff happening right now. <laughs> uh, raise your hands. We don't want any trouble, we're just trying to get home. This is your final warning. Stay where you are and put your hands... The SDU cop officer uh, cut in and the riot cop fell silent. His speech was slow and languid. He sounded vaguely bored. Save your breath, Constable. Look at the clothes, the gear. They're armed criminals and they're breaking curfew. You have your orders. I promise you, you don't want to do this. The big man growled into his throat mic. His amplified voice reverberated through the claustrophobic confines of the alleyway. Open fire! Well, that's not good. Alright, so. I'm... I thought we could maybe go a little bit down here, but obviously we revealed that this is a dead end. Hey, there's cover down here, though. But anyway, uh... Wow, I need to get back into the groove of how this character works again, huh? Alright, so Manifest was a way that I... Was that... I think Celestial Manifest... No, that, that's, the, that's the armor piercing attack, right. Killing... Yeah, there we go. Killing hands and stride. Cast on self. There we go. That'll give me the opportunity to close some distance here. 44% chance is not fantastic. Anyone else is not likely to be hit. Thankfully, we have all this extra AP. Which will give us some distant, uh, some extra progress here. 
If I use Celestial Manifest, I might be able to use it on, on this highly armored character. As I just charge in like a crazy person. Not the best hit chance. But let's punish him. Hey, buddy. Friend. Oh, yeah. That got past his armor. Unfortunately, Gaichu is... Everyone... Not Gaichu. Uh, Duncan and everyone's really far away at the moment. I guess been 2 AP approaching in that direction. That's about it. I keep trying to... I keep trying to think of the button that rotates the camera, and that's not really a thing in this game, if I remember correctly. Let's see, beanbag shot. Not likely to hit anyone from this far back. So I should probably try to get closer first. It'll cost 2 AP to get up there. Not a terrible option, though. Let's get some cover. And try to beanbag one of these guys. Hey, you. There we go. There's some crowd control to reduce the incoming shots. Now, Isabel, you're scary because you have this grenade launcher. Question is, yeah, I don't have great hit chances at the moment. But I can approach. Let's see here. Yeah, you, you can't rotate the... I'm trying to remember briefly. Yeah, you, I don't think you can rotate the camera in this game if I remember correctly. Let's see, I can mark target to get... Make people easier to hit. Really probably should have opened the fight with that, but moving on. I can do a few shots. Increased accuracy. Can definitely help me to try to work, hurt one of these characters, but I'm not likely to do a ton of damage. Yeah, 14 damage. These characters have 55 hit points. So the, the uh, explosives are not a terrible option here. If I go about closing some of the gap here. It cost me two AP to get up here. Ah, oh, it's just all useless garbage to hide behind. This is basically the best I'm going to get, isn't it? It's right here. Let's see if that improved my accuracy. 71% on the character that's not moving. Goody. Not the best. Let's go for other other types of attacks then. Let's see, accuracy that pierces armor. Double the actions. Steady shot. Do a few of those actions, probably. Detonate all mines. Not really something we're doing right now. Let's do a steady shot on the big tanky guy. Let's all work together on him. There we go, flanked. Now, Gobbit has a few fun tricks. Particularly the bonus AP. Can I give that... Let's definitely add the extra haste to my punchy character, especially since that gives him the ability to act again, meaning I can do my zero AP a punch right now. For eight damage. Followed by a Celestial Manifest. He's not quite down, but he's closer. Alright. This is the character that's good for just adding buffs to people, more or less. Aim shot's not likely to hit that target from here. I wonder if I go over here if I'll break all line of sight and basically ruin myself. Let's see. Yeah, the cover is really garbage around here. Let's see, she's down to 1 AP. I could just hang out all the way back here. Heal wound is useful for the healing up. Let's see. Plague, but yeah. Barrier fetish is fun. Not a terrible option, just to mess with some of these guys. I can just make it unpleasant for some of these people to exist if they ever try to move around at all. Ow. Slightly hurting me. Not a fan. Okay, they're hurting him now. Oh, not, oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, wait, no, that, that didn't hurt him, did it? Let's go to Gobbit. How much will I heal him for? Wounded 21, there we go. Oops, that's not the right, that's not the heal at all. There we go. 21 health, there we go. Thank God that last attack didn't actually hurt him. It just bothered him a bit, I guess. I'm not letting him off that easy. But with how many characters are on me, maybe I should get more armor? Ah, I'm already maxed out on armor, really. It's not really going to work that way. Let's see. It really just comes down to trying to punch people at this point. Could use the uh, stun gloves. Try to ruin somebody. Nah, focus on pure damage for now. Hey, you. Friend. No. Yes. Ooh, what did you drop on the ground? Cracked and bloody comlink. Zero AP. 
All right, grab that. And let's just go up here and crowd this other guy and make him feel uncomfortable. Friend. <laughs> it's just fun to do. All right. So we've already disarmed one guy. If I want, if I could get all the way to him, I could actually, where is it? Is it over here? Yeah. Subdue. But I probably don't have the ability to do it from here. Actually, no, I think I can. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's a one-person takedown. Guaranteed. Uses up my whole turn, but that character's out now. It does make Duncan vulnerable, so we're going to want to work on some of these characters. Yeah, chance of making this uh, missile launcher land where I want it to is not great. But I can make someone easier to shoot. So let's do that for one AP. Increase... No! The attack itself missed. So much for that. Dude, this is a... Uh, this is an increased accuracy shot. <laughs> nope. None of that's happening. Alright, burst fire. Let's just do what we can. There we go. Some damage happened. Alright, gobbit. Ooh, acid fog. That's always fun. Co cover intervening. Ah. Fortunately, the distance is a problem. All right, well, fine. Instead, we'll just move forward a bit. See, the fog cost me two AP. I'm already down to two, so I can't really do that right now. I can buff your aim, at the very least. Aimed burst will probably have mount, yeah, that'll mount to something. Very little. <laughs> All right, they're returning fire. Haha, <laughs> they're hurting themselves. And destroying their own AP supplies. More or less what I'd hope they would do. All right, we'll go after this guy because he's easy to target from here. Celestial Manifest will go past his armor. Hey, buddy. Buddy, old pal. I believe this qualifies as you being flanked. Zero AP attack. And he's down. All right, that was fun. I get hurt if I walk through that, don't I? Oh yeah, it works as cover for me is how this is the weirdness of this situation. Let's see. I mean, it's full cover. Let's make some bad guys feel uncomfortable. Let's see. Can I choose to attack these characters from that angle? I feel like this stuff hurts me too, but I can't quite remember correctly. I'll just take cover for now. Spook them a bit. I'm sure that Duncan can make a mess of them. Full auto. This is always fun. 50%'s not great. Do I have a flush out attack? Let's see. Target loses their cover bonus for the rest of the turn. There we go. That's good for my for my teammates, basically. No more cover for you. What if I beanbag you? 69? Nope. No such luck this time. Alright, double tap. Two attacks on the single target and one action. Critical hit chance increased. 63%. No cover bonus. Does that mean I can better at shooting this? Not quite, huh? I'm going for it. This is probably a terrible idea. Hey, got him. There's that. <laughs> Do it again. Okay, that was that was less effective. I apologize to everybody. All right, single shot. Oh, so close to going down. Okay. Yeah, the cover's a problem here. Don't have much control over where that's gonna land. Flush target. Let's see. Loses the cover bonus for a turn. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same thing in that case. No attack is particularly likely to land, but I can probably approach. The cover is garbage, though, unfortunately, so I'm kind of endangering myself here. Better acid fog chance, maybe? 58%? Come on! Oh. Alright. That, that was a bit of... Hey! A bit of a risk, but they got wiped out by it. Without warning, the cracked and bloody comlink that you pulled off the body of the SDU officer crackled the life. A second later, a cold voice poured through the device's speaker. Constables, this is Crate. It's her. The cop on all the newscasts when the APB went on, went on us live. I mean, on us went live. 
She set up the ambush that killed Carter and fucked up our lives. I want all units to move into position and sound off. You will then hold action until I say otherwise. We will put this riot down and restore the city to order. This riot is a response to police brutality in Kowloon City, Handyman. Something tells me the crate's plan to re restore order isn't going to be gentle. We don't want to be out here when it all comes in. Let's keep moving then. We'll try to keep the distractions to a minimum. Good call. Even if we could handle whatever crate's planning, kindly isn't paying us to kill cops. I mean, it's your call, but Pangs is right around the corner. I suggest we just beeline it right there. All right, things are things are th uh, thickening here. We want rev that's that's definitely a character we would want revenge on. It is the person that sort of ruined our lives, basically. We have as priorities to be taken here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here, though, guys. This will be a good little part one. Just sort of panning around a little bit. Looks like the only real path is actually just to go north again. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like always, I hope you're glad to see Shadowrun is back. And once again, if you didn't see the original series and you're spoiling yourself right now, uh, you can catch up on the original playthrough of the main game in the playlist in the description. And if you're seeing this video on any other day, any day besides the day it's brand new, you can also go that to that uh, play playlist in the description to see uh, the rest of the series, which I will complete. See you guys next time.